Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing group homomorphisms. Okay, right. Uh, so, we're in the process of discussing a few theorems regarding group homomorphisms. Okay, and the next one that I want to show you is that the image of a homomorphism is always a subgroup of the codomain group. Okay, and this theorem is going to allow us to reduce any non-subjective homomorphism into a subjective homomorphism. Okay, so the next thing that I want to prove then is that the image of a homomorphism, the image of our homomorphism which we're denoting phi, is a subgroup, okay, which is denoted by this less than sign of the codomain group G prime. So this is the next thing that I want to show then. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of the definition of the image of a homomorphism. Okay, so uh, in abstract notation, the image of a homomorphism is all the elements of the codomain group G prime which have elements in the domain group G being mapped onto them. Okay, so we can write it like so. It's the set containing all things of the form phi of little g, where little g is an element of big G, basically. Okay, so you go through all of the elements of capital G, basically. Go through every single element that's in the domain group, capital G, and take what that element's being mapped onto, take phi of little g, take all of those answers, basically, and stick them into a set. Okay, and that's what is meant by the image of a homomorphism. Okay, but let's draw a picture for this. So, once again, let's say we've got our domain group here. So here is capital G, our domain group. And I'll colour that in in red here. Okay. And then we'll have our codomain group as well, capital G prime here. Okay. And once again, we'll colour that in in green. Okay. And then we've got our uh, homomorphism, which is our mapping between these two. Now, the image of the homomorphism is the subset of the codomain group that actually has elements in the domain group being mapped onto it. Okay, now, of course, if the homomorphism is subjective, then the image of the homomorphism will be the entire codomain group. Okay, because if it's subjective, it means that every single element in G prime gets an element in G being mapped onto it. So all little g prime in big G get an element in uh, the domain group, capital G here, which we could call little g, okay, being mapped onto it by this uh, homomorphism phi, basically. Okay, so if the homomorphism is subjective, then the image of the homomorphism will indeed just be the entire group G prime. Okay, however, if it's non-subjective, then that means there'll be elements in this um, code main group, capital G prime, which don't have any elements in the domain group, capital G being mapped onto them. Okay, and once again, I'll colour in this subset in orange here. Okay, so here is a portion then that I'm uh, supposing doesn't have any elements in the domain group, capital G being mapped onto uh, the elements in that portion. Okay, and therefore the image of the homomorphism would now be a proper subset. It would be this portion that isn't highlighted in orange, the set of all things which do have elements in the domain group being mapped onto them. Okay, right. So what I want to prove then is that this subset of the codomain group, capital G prime, is in fact a subgroup. Okay, so we know that it's a subset, so at the moment what we know is that the image of the homomorphism is a subset of uh, capital G prime, a subset of the codomain group. Okay, but we don't know that it's a subgroup, so let's remember what do we need to prove in order to show that this is a subgroup. Okay, so a subgroup of any old group is fundamentally a subset of that group, which when you take the inherited composition law on the elements of that subset uh, forms a group, basically. Okay, so um, since it's a subset of the uh, original group, then you can nick the composition law from the original group, basically, and restrict it down just to the elements of the subset, and that forms a nice composition law on this subset, and in order 
for this subset with that inherited composition law on it to be considered a subgroup, it needs to be a group in its own right, basically. So it needs to be closed under composition, it needs to be associative, it needs to have an identity element, and it needs to have inverses. So let's start with number one first. So we need to prove that it's closed. Okay, we need to prove closure. So what does that mean then? Okay, that means that we need to prove that if we compose any two elements together, which are from the image of the homomorphism, that we will get another element in the image of the homomorphism, basically. Okay, so let's take two elements in the image of our homomorphism. So we'll say that this portion here in white is the image of our homomorphism. Let's take two arbitrary elements. So let's say we have little g prime and little g prime bar. So I've got these two elements, little g prime and little g prime bar, or g bar prime maybe. Okay, and these are both elements, let's say, of the image of the homomorphism phi. Okay, so they're both elements in this subset of the codomain group, which actually has elements in the domain group being mapped onto it. Okay, right. Uh, so we've got two elements arbitrary elements in the image of the homomorphism. And in order to show that the image of the homomorphism is closed, what we need to show is that for these arbitrary elements, if we compose them together, okay, the answer, whatever it may be, is still in the image of the homomorphism. So this is what we want to show. So I'll just put the little title here, to show. This is what I want to show. And if I show that, then I'll have shown that the uh, subset is closed. I will have shown that if you take two arbitrary elements in the image of the homomorphism and compose them together under this inherited composition law from the codomain group, that it gives you another answer, which is also in the image of the homomorphism. So how on earth do you do this? Well, quite simply, what you use is the fact that these are actually in the image of the homomorphism. Okay, so if these two elements are in the image of the homomorphism, that what does that actually mean? That means that there must be elements in the domain group which are mapped onto them. Okay, so let's say uh, that we have the element little g in the domain group that is being mapped onto little g prime in the codomain group. So I'll once again color code it. This is actually shown in this picture, but I'm not going to try and add another one onto that picture, so I'll draw it out separately here. Okay, so all I'm saying there is if little g prime is an element of the image of the homomorphism, what does that actually mean? That means that there must have been an element in the domain group which was being mapped onto it. Now, of course, we don't know that this homomorphism is injective. I never said that it was injective. It doesn't have to be injective. If it's not injective, then it will be the case that there might be multiple uh, elements in the domain group being mapped onto uh, little g prime here. I don't care about that situation, just pick one of them, okay? The fact that this is in the image of the homomorphism just tells me that there is at least one element in the domain group being mapped onto it. If there's more than one, I don't care, just pick one of them, basically. It just matters that there is at least one. Okay, and the same is going to be true for this other element, g bar prime. Okay, there'll be some little g bar in the uh, domain group here, which will be mapped onto it. Again, I don't care if there's more than one. Okay, just pick one of them. I just need one, basically. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, that means that now I can rewrite these two elements. I can rewrite little g prime as phi of little g. Okay, that's perfectly valid. And I can do the same for little g bar prime. Okay, I can rewrite little g bar prime as phi of little g bar. Okay, again, perfectly valid. Now, why is this a good approach? Why am I bothering? Okay, well, it means now that what I can do is rewrite this composition in terms of this. And why is that good fun? Okay, well, we have the property of homomorphism. So let's have a look at this. So now let me substitute in these here. Okay, and what I'll get is that this is phi of little g composed with phi of little g bar. Okay, I've just rewritten it in terms of rewriting these elements in terms of this, basically. Okay, now why is that good? Well, now I can use the property of homomorphisms. I can combine this together to get what? That this is phi of little g composed with little g bar. Okay, and why is that nice? Okay, well, that's nice because 
Little G composed with little G bar. I don't know what that is equal to, but whatever that is, it is some element of the group. Let's call it uh, maybe little G bar bar, double bar. Okay, this is some element of the domain group capital G here, which means that the answer to little G prime composed with little G bar prime is equal to phi of little g double bar, basically, which means that this is in the image of the homomorphism. Okay, so what I have just shown is that this is indeed in the image of the homomorphism because it can be written as phi of little g double bar, okay, where little g double bar is some element of the group. And the very definition of the image of the homomorphism is the things in the codomain group which have elements in the domain group being mapped onto them. So I have just shown that if little g prime and little g bar prime are in the image of the homomorphism, then the two of them composed together is also in the image of the homomorphism, basically. And therefore, this subset is closed under uh, composition. Okay, right. Axiom number two of group theory we don't need to worry about. Associativity, we know that it, for any arbitrary subset you like that you could take of any group, uh, the composition law that you inherit from the larger group always obeys associativity, because if it didn't, then the uh, composition law on the larger group wouldn't obey associativity. Okay, so we don't need to worry about associativity at all. We've got that automatically when we said that this was a subset of our codomain group. Okay, right. Axiom number three, then. Okay, axiom number three says that we need to have an identity element. Okay, so axiom number three, we need an identity element. Now, why do we always have the identity element from the codomain group in the image of the homomorphism? Okay, well, we've already answered that. Okay, we know that the homomorphism phi will map the identity in the domain group, the identity in G, onto the identity in G prime. Now, what does that instantly mean? That means the identity in G prime is an element of the image of the homomorphism. Okay, so it's instantly in this subset, always, 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 always. Okay, so we always have the identity of the codomain group within the image of the homomorphism, which means that the image of the homomorphism has the identity. 